bricks. Everywhere you notice the bricks, except where you notice the bricks have gone missing. Like in every street, where the roundhouse was ripped down brick by brick after the settlement circus quit town. Or on cobbled streets that once echoed to handcarts drawn over rutted bricks, and sharpening, and coffee apples, and scampering feet and fists clutching knives, scissors, threepenny bits, or rag and bone, or in deathly silence, curtains drawn, and steaming heaps of horse manure, and everywhere still there's bricks. Ancoats dispensary, I didn't actually know what it was at first, because when I lived in Ancoats it was just a kind of derelict sort of building with scaffolding. And I asked somebody and they said that it was an, an old, it used to be a hospital for the community, for the Ancoats community. So for normal working class people, we'd be able to go there and use the services there. The Ardwick and Ancoats Dispensary was built in the 1800s and was one of the first hospitals to provide free healthcare for the people of Manchester. It supported the community for over 140 years and is cherished by many as a symbol of a past that shouldn't be forgotten. Scars on my eyes, scars. everybody's got scars because there wasn't much grass in Ancoats. And the, the, the football that we played, it was played on shale. So we were, we were quite damaged in, in, in respect of scars of playing football. And that's why we, we always went to um, the Ancoats dispensary because they'd stitch you in, rec in record time, you were back out again. It was the first industrialised clinic in the world. And among other medical achievements, the link between pollen and hay fever was discovered there. It was closed in 1989 after a healthcare restructure of Manchester and fell into disrepair shortly afterwards. The building was almost demolished until a grassroots movement of local residents campaigned to save it and formed the Ancoats Dispensary Trust. Their plan is to create a health and wellbeing centre that would serve the community. However, the building is currently gutted, windowless and roofless and in desperate need of a complete refurbishment. After a huge amount of effort, they secured a lottery heritage grant to save the building, but a percentage of it must be matched in order for the full amount to be released. Until this happens, the future of the building is uncertain. There was ideas, I think, to, to redo it and rebuild it and then it kind of, uh, it, all the funding for it stopped with the funding cuts, which I think is kind of symbolic really of what's happening to sort of areas like Anchor. It's a shame. It's, it feels like we're kind of losing a part of our history, um, I feel anyway. It's kind of all of that time and effort and money going into building these absolutely incredible built, um, buildings, whether it's for the Industrial Revolution or just kind of through the Victorian period, they kind of seem to be getting a bit lost in modern day architecture and modern day um, flats and housing. If you lose the past, there's no, there's no, the future won't make any sense. And that's the only point of reference really for Ancoats. You've got Stubbs's mill and you've got the, you've got the, you've got the, the uh, Royal Mills. I know of another mill just down the road which is being turned into flats this year um, for sale for next year. They're not really interested in, in, in any further development for communities. What they're actually investing the money in is, you know, new blocks of flats. So actually local communities with working class people having no investment and no support to just live a healthy, happy life. If they restored this, the dispensary, they would be very much um, keeping a part of Manchester's history within Manchester. And it needs preserving, not just the facade. It needs to, it needs to become, become alive again. Both my grandfather and my grandmother survived cancer because of that place. It's a sin that nothing was ever done about the destruction. Residents from Ancoats have been moved out. People who've lived there in council flats for years have been moved out, so split from their communities, from their families, from their lives, and then they've rebuilt in those areas to put sort of uh, young professionals in. There's nowhere for people to actually congregate. Uh, there is for a certain age group, but when you go beyond that age group, it doesn't, it doesn't work. 
There's no hub, there's no pubs, like the oldest pub in Ancos got pulled down last week. I think it would be much more beneficial to bring the community together to kind of support the arts in Manchester, which it's, it's a very creative city and I think that this might be an aspect which is being lost. It was our community, it was Irish, English, Italian, Sikhs, there was Polish, there was a couple of African families, but it was one community not separate communities. And that's, that's the beauty about Ancoats. It became one community. There are connoisseurs of bricks would have a field day in Ancoats, spotting Longsight, Breadbury, Charlton, Adswood, Reddish and Denton brick, and exotic species brought up or down the Ashton Canal from Accrington, Sheffield, and even further abroad brick-built mills and chimney stacks, some of them standing, some ghosts. Two up, two downs with brick outhouses and walls with locked gates running down back alleys with brick-built gullies, bricks all around, over the arches and under your feet. The great Carmo might have whisked the asphalt from under the wheels of parked cars and there, voila, they would be. The bricks, an embarrassment of bricks. Why then this sickening clamour for ours? Why cart away our precious bricks?